It's Sunday, the perfect day to relax, catch up on your reading, maybe take a bath. But it is also day nine of stay in and make do, which means we're going to take a few minutes to make your Sunday bath even more relaxing by harnessing the power of microbit. I suppose I should get out of here and show you how. For me, the most stressful thing about taking a bath is running it. I am super forgetful, so I always run the risk of flooding the house. Speaking of forgetful, it looks like I also forgot to get dressed. Hang on. Much better. So we want the micro bit to warn us when our bath gets to the perfect level. I got this buzzer here because although it's just three volts, like me, it is irritatingly loud for its size. If you don't have a buzzer, you can use a second micro bit and I will show you how at the end. But apart from that, all you need is wires. It would also be possible to use one of these fancy float switches. As the fluid level rises, this part, well, <laughs> floats and completes a circuit. Either physically or a magnet in this part pulls shut a metal switch in that part. But since the fluid we're interested in is tap water, we can make things even simpler. Now, pure water doesn't conduct electricity, but all of the things dissolved in tap water mean that tap water does. So if we have a circuit going between one of the pins of our micro bit and ground, if we make a break in that circuit at the height we want our bath, when the water reaches that level, it will complete the circuit and we can detect that on our micro bit and trigger our buzzer. It goes without saying that you should be very careful with micro bits and batteries and water. Use nice long wires so you can keep the device and the batteries far away from the switch and the bath. But let's write some code first. We need to check whether our bath is ready. So grab an if else block and drop it in forever. Then go into input and find this pin zero is pressed. This block is checking whether there's a connection between pin zero and ground by passing a tiny amount of electricity through it. If there is a connection, the water has completed the circuit and our bath is run, so we want to turn on the buzzer. Go into pins and select digital right pin. If pin zero is the one we're using to detect the bath level, we can't have our buzzer on the same pin. So let's change this to pin one. Remember that digital right means one or zero, on or off. So change this to a one to turn the buzzer on when the bath is run. We don't really need this else part but let's use it to switch the buzzer off if someone lets the water out or we take the wires out of the water. And change that to a zero. I've got my buzzer connected, positive to pin one and negative to ground. And I've also got two wires, one connected to pin zero and one connected to ground. And if I touch them together, The buzzer sounds. I can't be bothered to wait for the bath to run again, so let's test it in this glass of water. If you don't have a buzzer, you could use two micro bits. Just get one to send a signal to the other when the bath is run, and then take that micro bit around with you as you go about your business. In fact, this might be an even better solution because the radio range for micro bits is up to 70 meters, probably further away than you could hear that buzzer. You can go back to projects three, four, and five if you want more information on how to get two micro bits talking. But for now, stay in, make do, and chill out. I am super forgetful, so I always mess up the take. For me, the most stressful thing about running a bath is taking it. <laughs> Normal water, sometimes called water. <laughs> we'll do the whole thing again because I forgot what water was called. And if I touch those two wires together, nothing happens because I'd shorted out the buzzer.